Now when I created this, I did a little design work and I sized these things to be kind of pleasant size. These are tables and to insert tables you put your cursor where you want it to be and then you can go to table and insert and it gives you the ability to show how big the table should be. That's kind of beyond what we want to do. I would suggest you explore that on your own if you really want to get into HTML editing. When you use that, that puts in that complex indented series of code values for TD for table definitions. But I'm suggesting for your project you do something like this. If you click on this, this shows you where this picture is coming from. But that's not the picture that we're going to put in here. We want that Demo 1 picture, remember? So what I'm going to do here is to click on it and press the Delete key. Now I've removed that image. I'll do the same thing here. And in fact, you would do the same thing for all of this. You could just clear out all of my images. When you do this, there is nothing here anymore. But when I put the cursor in there and I say Insert Image, now I get to look for where is the image. And here is where you would go and find that file, which should be your project file, and go to the Reduced Images. Notice Demo 1. I'll click on that. When I say Open there, that location for the image comes up. Now since you're doing this on your computer, it's going to show this as the folder name and the image. And that's okay for our purposes. You will have to specify alternate text. Here, this is what's going to appear if for some reason the image isn't available to the browser of the viewer. Maybe a mistake has been made or maybe there's some problem with their internet connection, they can't get the image. I'm just going to put some text in here. I'm not going to see that unless the image doesn't appear. And you see now the image comes in. So if I go here with the cursor in this cell and I say here insert image and I do demo 2, the same thing will happen and I'll just put that phrase in here because the system doesn't care. It's better if you put in here some description of what this is so that someone who didn't get the image at least knows what they should have gotten. And here this one goes in. Now this is coming together kind of nicely because I've sized everything here already. So if you stick to the size of image that I have, which is 320 by 179, it was intended to be 320 by 180. But for some reason when I edited these things, the size was one pixel less in width. And I could continue to do all of that, either by deleting it or by using my delete key. Here, don't be concerned about the fact that this has shrunken a bit. If I put my cursor in here and I insert an image, and I'll insert in this case the demo one again. Anything here, as soon as I put the image in, it will expand vertically to the right size. Now that's really all you have to do to complete this screen. And it is kind of simple to do that. This is not intended to be an overwhelmingly complex project. If you wanted to vary this design a bit, you could certainly do that. It gets a little more complicated, but if you were to highlight this entire table, whoops, you see, I can move them around that way, too. It's pretty simple to uh, rearrange things here. Or to, let's say, do this. But if you wanted to change this background, what you wind up doing is right mouse clicking in the cell, any cell, and table or cell background color. And here, if I go to this, you'll see where this is the color that I picked. If I wanted to change the color, let's say to, oh, something like this, which will be a little too bright, I'm assuming, I can do that. And what's happened? Well, it doesn't seem like it's changed. And that is one of the mysteries of Composer. It gets a little bit frustrating sometimes because you may be trying to do something and wondering why the result doesn't come out the way that you want it. Frankly, I would wonder the same thing. So I would suggest not getting into that. 
because it goes kind of beyond what we're doing here. That's kind of learning the intricacies of composer. Now, supposing you weren't pleased with my background color of purple, which was intended to complement this yellow, we could change either of these. If we go out here, for example, let's first of all change the background color. I can go up here to Format, Page Colors and Background, and here I can set all of the defaults. These we don't really need to change. This is just going to be how your text comes up in terms of colors. And this is a standard choice. But the background, if you click in this, let's just say I wanted to make the background this color. And the background changes. Now that's not a particularly pleasing color in combination with the purple. Let's change the background color for the table. All I have to do is go into some unoccupied cell and double click. That's the left mouse button. And you'll get Composer to open up something that lets you work with a cell or with the entire table. And you'll notice the background color is here. If you click on the background color, what color do we suppose might go well with green? Well, maybe some sort of a light blue. Let's try that. Let's apply it and say OK. That's not particularly good as far as I'm concerned, but it might work. You could do the same thing here for this table and change its background color because, in fact, this text is in a table that has one row and it's one column wide. Why is that? Well, that's because I wanted this text to fit above this table instead of off to the left or trying to arrange the print here without having the ability to specify its left and right margin. So one cell tables are kind of common for that purpose. This, if I could double click on it, is going to give me these kind of specifications for this table. And if I go here and put a zero, you'll see the table will have no border. Now this table has a background color and I've just reset it to red by clicking here and the background color for the table is what's accounting for that little border around it. I've made that border very thin by turning that into a zero but if I put a larger number there I'll wind up getting something a little bit bigger and if I make that border number even bigger this will get wider and wider. So perhaps you like this sort of a, an appearance. Here we have an easy way to specify the background color of just that type. But I'm interested in this. And if I click on that color, I can change the color of that print. So let's do this. And the same thing goes if I wanted to make this italicized. I can do that. Now what's going to happen? How do I get this finally out there? Let's suppose I'm finished with this. All I really have to do is save it. And it's going to save it as the same name because we've simply been editing this file. I'm going to close this now and let me go back. You'll notice that this time will reflect the time that you last saved it. It's very early in the morning here in Los Angeles when I'm doing this, so it's 5.23 in the morning. Let's take a look at what this looks like in a browser. What's happened? I'm not getting my images. Well, the problem is I made a mistake in using Composer, and I wanted to show you what this looks like because you may make the same mistake. Let's go back and take a look at this using Composer. And since I recently worked on this, this recent pages will bring me right back to the same thing. Now this works here, but I'm going to double click on the image, and that's a fast way of bringing up that insert the image information. Notice here, this is not really a complete file name. What's happening is it's coming in only as the current folder and the name of the file. But when that gets put into the HTML, it's not sufficient. The problem here is this little URL is relative to page location. Let's unclick that, and you'll see now the complete file reference comes up. This will be sufficient for our purposes, but it will start to cause a problem when you give this to me to execute it. 
So if you were to bring in for your demonstration this code on a flash drive and I can run it on my machine, we'll have to do a little work to make it run properly. The handiest way to demonstrate this when you come in will be to bring your own laptop, if you have one, and demonstrate it for me on that. I'm certainly not expecting you to put this on the web. That would be beyond this. If you want to do that and you have a place to put it, you certainly can, but that's something that we don't get into in this course because it gets to be a, a complexity that is kind of overwhelming. So we'll adjust this if you don't have it working properly and it has to run on my machine, or you can demonstrate it on your own machine and it will work fine. Let me unclick this to get the full definition. It doesn't change what happens when I'm using Composer. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to get out of there. Now let's take a look at what this looks like when I open it with the browser. I right mouse click. I'm going to open with, I would suggest Google Chrome or Firefox. The reason I suggest that is that when I tried to open this in Internet Explorer, for some reason it didn't find the picture where I had put it. If I right mouse click and open this, let's say with Firefox, things happen properly. If I right mouse click and open with Chrome, things happen properly. If I right mouse click and open with Internet Explorer, things don't happen properly. And this is not worth getting into at this point, but I would suggest that you try a different browser if you have a poor result in Internet Explorer. You may find that it's not a problem with your code, but a problem with your browser. In this case, what's happening is Internet Explorer is having a problem with the reference for this. And if I were to look at the source code using Internet Explorer, I could see here that the reference to the picture that I'm trying to find is actually fine. This reference is fine as we have now changed it so it's given the full file reference. But for some reason Internet Explorer is still having a problem. It's not your problem, it's the browser's problem. These images are coming in because these I've placed on the web and you may notice a slight delay when this comes up because since my full web images are there, since my full web address is present for the image, you're actually getting this from the Internet. If my machine were not connected to the Internet, these wouldn't appear either. Let's take one more look, though, at this in a different browser. And if I right mouse click here and inspect this, I see that this is the location that it's actually getting this picture from, and it is appearing. So let's call this the endpoint of your work. We would see here every one of your reduced size images. As a final check, let's just make sure that this goes to the video that you've prepared. Just click on it. And in this case, you'll notice that it's that silly video that I had replaced my real download. It's that silly video that I had it's that silly video whose address I had put in there just to alter it from the download just to alter it from the original video that I had put out there explaining and you'll notice here what comes up is that alternative video that I uh, replaced the original address with just for demonstration purposes. So if we... Now what do you bring in for evaluation? I would suggest bring in your machine. If you can't bring in your machine, at least bring in this folder. And you don't need to zip that, just copy this, the one folder that contains your images and your code place that on a flash drive and bring it in and we'll run it on a machine uh, at the campus. We may have to adjust the code in order to do that so that we get those images coming in properly. Well I hope this has helped you with project 4.7. If you have any additional questions that are not covered in this video, please do email me or call me. I'll be happy to give you a hand with it.